check out and form your conscience. This is not technically politics. These are just issues. I think our God talks about issues, so so, so should we. And just to give you a roadmap, we've been doing this for three, four weeks, I guess, already. And all we have left is day taxation. Next week is drug abuse or use, as it were, because there's some things that are kosher in our society and others are not. And then the last one is, should I even bother to vote? And spoiler alert, yes, God wants you to vote, but we're going to talk about it. So let's jump into taxation, true or false. Greed is good. False. Greed is actually a sin. Uh, It's listed as something dangerous to your soul, and we're going to talk about that. Um, Number two, taxation is legalized theft. False. I'm not sure why you are laughing. Three, we pay taxes so that the government can take care of people. True. Some may take issue with that as well, but we're going to talk about it. Four, taxation without representation is a reason to revolt. False. False. You do not revolt, Christian. Okay? I know that that's, we just had July 4th. We're going to talk about that. Um, I, people, I, when I was a vicar, my intern year, I went down to Cape Coral, Florida. I'll never forget this. Do you, do you remember this? Yeah. Um, young Nathan saw me do that, and I got huge pushback when I said that the American Revolution was a godless revolt. That did not go over well. But anyway, the last one, a Christian happily pays his taxes. It should be true. I don't know that this Christian does. I need to work on that, especially after convicting my own heart and doing, writing a Bible study on it. But this, I, I don't normally talk about taxes per se. We talk about Christian stewardship. This is just about taxes. All right, how much of our society is driven by greed? Do you know who that guy is in that picture? Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street. He has a good little soliloquy there at the beginning where he talks about how greed is good. And greed drives capitalism and all the wonderful things about it. And I would say greed is extremely dangerous. <laughs> and it can take over your heart. But let's hear the passage from Luke 12. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Does that sound like the American way to you? No. This, this is extremely counterculture. And if you ask any high school senior, what do you want to do with your life? They've said to me, I just want a job that pays me a lot of money. Oh, okay. Well, tell me how that goes for you in a few years. You need to find a job that you love, that you're passionate about, and it won't really matter how much money you make. Because if you hate your job, I've met people like that too. They're miserable. And um, yeah. Watch out for greed. It's dangerous. Next, do you enjoy paying taxes? That's all you get is it's these people who are happily paying their taxes online. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Not a commercial. That's just, that, that is uh, stock photography that I have access to. Yeah. Um, I don't enjoy paying my taxes. Again, I need to work on that. I, this is why this is a really good one. Uh, because there are some people who are just like, whoever lowers my taxes, I'm going to vote for. And I'm going to say it's not necessarily a, the way to, I mean, yeah. Taxes in and of themselves aren't bad. Let's get into it. Who gives government the power? John 19. You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. The context of that verse? Jesus to Pilate. How's Jesus doing at this point? He's struggling. He's lost a lot of blood. He has no skin on his back anymore. He's a crown of thorns beaten into his head. And he's about to be crucified. And he says to Pilate, you would have no power if it wasn't given to you. We're saying this in a positive light. Government has power from God. They exist by divine right. The divine right of kings is real. And I know that we're a little warped in our American society because we get to vote. But the divine right of Joe Biden... um, Governor, that's terrible. Cooper, thank you. And, um, oh man, it was right there. Who's the Winston-Salem guy? 
joint. Alan joint. They rule by divine right. Every, God gives them all the authority to do it. So does God want me to pay taxes? Matthew 22. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Not a lot of wiggle room there. If the government demands it, you pay it. And you have to understand, in that day and age, and the Chosen does a good job of listing out the crushing tax burden, how people lost their homes, they broke up families, the Romans were awful. Nowhere does Jesus say don't pay your taxes. In Romans 13. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Yeah. You pay it. This is a wonderful service that God gives you. And we've already talked about how anarchy is way worse than government, even though our government's not perfect. It is the most terrible government except for every other government around the world, right? Moving on. Number five. What if the government is evil? Do I still have to pay? Romans 13. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. My freshman Latin course was on Suetonius. He was a biographer of the Twelve Caesars. It is X-rated Latin. It is disgusting. It is the hardest Latin you can find. These were awful, awful men. This was a truly evil government. And the Apostle Paul writes and says, you submit. Because this is what your God says. You don't get to say, I don't like the president. No, nobody cares what you like. This is your leader. You, you, you respect him. And in this case, you, you pay taxes. Six, why does God want me to work, Ephesians 4? He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do you think about your job that way? Why does God give you a job? So you can have something to share. It's an interesting thought, right? In our society of capitalism and merit, he says, share it, people. Be generous. Now, changing gears, should the government help people? We're getting very close to this. I think this will happen in, in my lifetime. What is UBI? Universal basic income. Should the government give people a check just for breathing in this great land of ours? Now, the government, the, our God is silent on this topic. The one thing that makes me uncomfortable with topics like UBI is when people say, I don't need to help my neighbor because the government does that for me. I don't think that God lets you off the hook. You don't get to abdicate your responsibility and stop loving your neighbor just because the government now does that for you. That's not how it works. And I'm not necessarily against welfare programs or UBI. I think that we can have wonderful debates about that. But I, just on this topic of taxation... You don't get to pay your taxes and then say, I don't get to help my neighbor. All right? You still have that obligation to love your neighbor and that debt to your friend and family. And you're going to see this here in a second. Number eight, what if we, if we don't have representation, does the government get to tax us? Yes. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. Yeah. It's not that hard to make a case for the American, Re American Revolution to be godless. And the pushback I got was, okay, fine, then why do we submit to this authority? I said, well, you're a Christian and you're loyal to King James, and all of a sudden, it all falls apart, and now there's a new governing authority that the people around you have established and you just happen to be there. You don't get to say, that's not my president. You couldn't say that in 1776. And you can't say that now. That's the new leader and you submit. It's messy, Christian. 
horribly. So, try your best. Luther said, go and sin boldly. Because sometimes you don't know what you're going to do. You just try your best. That's why God gave you a conscience. All right, last one. What is to be my attitude toward government? Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Yeah, and in, our day and day, in our day and age of Bart Simpson calling his dad Homer, it all kind of washed away. That was what I grew up in. And there isn't necessarily a lot of respect always. And so I love in the South, and if you walk into the school that my wife runs, you address a teacher by sir and ma'am. There is respect, and I think that's important. I think those little social graces make a big difference in your families, in our church, and everywhere. You can call me Fred, I don't care. Uh, but just understand that God wants you to respect all those who are in authority. Any questions on taxation? Say this prayer with, oh, okay, yeah. How do you reconcile the idea of a just war with Evelyn asked, because no one online heard her, how do you reconcile the concept of a just war and a revolt? And I would say it's hard because your point, well, I would say a just war would be your nation going to do whatever it thinks is right. And so the soldiers in that war, and a better question is, could two Christians go into World War I? You have a Christian in England and a Christian in Germany. And they're fighting each other in a, in a trench. Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah. This is where you submit to your governing authority. And um, this is also where a Christian has some really hard choices. What do I do if they want me to kill families or children? And it gets even more complicated. What if a children has a bomb strapped to him and he's walking toward them? And you're a sniper, do you take that shot? There's all kinds of really awful things in this world that you have to work through as a Christian. And you might get it wrong. And this is where our Good Shepherd forgives us. And we just try our best. I don't know if that's a great answer or not, but it's a good question. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, bend my will by the power of your Spirit to yours. Let me honor my nation and pay my taxes with a willing heart. Amen. There are no other announcements. I will say that there is cake to celebrate the baptism, so please do stop and eat it. And meet the new family. And uh, their, their children are beautiful. So, may God give you all a blessed week.